Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's tutorial is all about how to make your own face cast at home for the purposes of creating and molding your own special effects prosthetics. I have to say this is probably one of the hardest things I've done, especially if you are claustrophobic, you will not find this process easy at all. If you can go and get this done professionally, then I would advise you to do so. If you don't have anyone in your area that can do it for you and you have to do it at home, then please make sure you have someone else to supervise you in the room. I began by cleansing the area with 70% alcohol. You will need to use a bald cap or a swimming cap to protect your hair and ears. I'm using a latex bald cap from Mayron. I turned the bald cap up and applied Prose to all the areas where the bald cap was going to be attached to the skin, including my neck. I used this USB mini fan to speed up the drying process. This is actually a cyclist neck fan that I bought off Amazon and it's really helpful in situations like this where you want to speed up the drying process. Once the prosade was clear and tacky, I pulled and stretched the bald cap down making sure there were no wrinkles in it as this will affect the overall result of your face cast. I then cut away the extra edges of the bald cap with a pair of scissors. Please be careful while doing this as you don't want to cut yourself. I then used a latex free sponge and stippled some liquid latex around all the edges of the bald cap to give a seamless transition between the bald cap and my skin. Using the fan again to speed up the drying process, you can always add extra layers of liquid latex if necessary. This next step is very important. Please do not forget to add Vaseline to your eyebrows and eyelashes, otherwise they will be pulled out when you are removing the face cast. Next I drew the outline of the face cast. Please make sure to give yourself an extra inch or two working space, otherwise your final face cast will be too small. Next you will need to use Alginate which will form to your face and give you a perfectly detailed impression. Some people skip this step and go straight to the plaster but I would not advise that. The ideal mix ratio is about 2 to 1 by value, adding the powder to 73 degree Fahrenheit water which is about 22 degrees Celsius. I found alginate extremely difficult to work with as it cures so quickly, so please work in small batches otherwise you will end up throwing a lot of this product away. Once you've added the powder and water, mix for about one minute using a wire whisk and then immediately start applying it to your face as you only have about three minutes to work with before the product begins to cure and set. As I said before, I found alginate really hard to work with and no matter what I tried, I ended up with this lumpy mixture. But at this point, I decided that I wasn't going to give up and was just hoping that it wasn't going to affect the overall result of my face cast. Make sure when you're applying the alginate that you get into all the creases and that there are no air bubbles underneath, otherwise this will give you an inaccurate impression of your face cast. As you'll be covering your mouth, at this point it's really important to remember not to cover the airways to your nose. Once you have an even and hopefully lump-free layer of alginate over your face and before it has set, you will need to embed some cotton fibers by dabbing a piece of cotton over the entire surface. These cotton fibers will bind the plaster bandages and the alginate together so that the face cast can be removed in one piece. Next, you'll need to apply plaster bandages to reinforce the alginate. Hold both ends of the plaster bandage and dip into a bowl of warm water that you prepared in advance, squeezing out all the excess water. Mm -hmm. 
I began by framing my face across the top of my forehead, then down the left and right side, and finally placed a bandage under the chin. I cut smaller pieces of bandages for the nose area. And I repeated this process over the whole face until I had done about three layers. Again, please make sure to leave the air passages to your nose exposed for breathing. I found this to be quite an uncomfortable experience, so please make sure you have someone in the room with you if necessary. The bandage is set to a rigid state in about 10 to 15 minutes, and then the face cast will be ready to be removed. To remove, I first cut into the bald cap at the back, and then to break the vacuum, I slipped my fingers in around the edge of the mould and it just fell off into my hands. As I left both eyes open, I now had to seal them with a few layers of plaster bandages before I could add the casting mix. Please don't forget to also cover up the air passages you left open for the nose with a few layers of plaster bandages as well. Make sure to have a small box filled with styrofoam or rolled up towels. This will help to support the face mould when it's filled with casting powder. For the casting mix, add about one part water to two parts casting powder. You'll know you've added enough powder when you get this cracked mud effect on the surface. Please, 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 before adding this plaster mix to your mould, please make sure to line your mould with Vaseline. This will act as a release agent so that once your plaster has dried, it will make removing it from the mould much easier. I forgot this step and I had a really hard time removing my face cast from the mould once it had dried. I poured the casting mix in and left it overnight to dry and this was the end result. As you can see, because I didn't line my mould with Vaseline, the plaster bandages completely stuck to my face cast, especially in the eye area where there wasn't any alginate. I then used my tools to remove any of the plaster bandages and to smooth out any imperfections. I tried to carve out the eyes, but I have to admit defeat on this one. The eyes do not look like mine. For the final step, I used a water-based varnish and painted this over the entire face cast. Please make sure that the varnish is water-based. If it is oil-based, it will break down the plaster. And that's it guys, this is my finished face cast. Having encountered a few difficulties initially with the lumpy alginate and not lining my mould with Vaseline, I'm actually quite impressed with the end result. 
while the eyes don't look like mine, for the purposes of creating and moulding special effects prosthetics, this face cast will do just fine. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, and if you have any tips or tricks on making face casts, especially working with Alginate, then please let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching guys, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing.